Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Agri. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this afternoon, we shall be talking about the whole matter of the Jamaicans, the Jamaican media, the Jamaican media landscape, and the fact that it needs to get its act together. It needs to render more accountability. It needs to be more transparent. Our media houses have not been demonstrating the sort of journalistic integrity that we would, you know, demand or people, well-thinking minds, I should say, would demand of a democracy, right, from democratic institutions of which the media, the Jamaican media play a very pivotal role in sustaining and perhaps enhancing our so-called democracy. But I think the papers, um, particularly the Gleaner and the Observer, have been very partisan in terms of their presentation of the news. So I let me just say here categorically, I do not wish anybody to assault anyone. And I do not think that people should, you know, people are free to express themselves and to express what they think about what journalists are doing or not doing. I don't think we should set them up for assault. Right. And to I am not here promoting any forms of violence against our journalists, but journalists need to also just like teachers have to. Right. Because the journalists in Jamaica often criticize teachers. Teachers are not doing well and their performance is lacking. If we should look at the media in Jamaica, the media landscape, I think I would give them a D. Right. They are not reporting the news as the news should be reported. They are not reporting it objectively. They are not reporting it um transparently, and they're also not reporting the new news in a non partisan way so that people can gather the facts and that they will come up, they will formulate their own conclusions. What we see coming out of the media are narratives that are closely aligned with the PSOJ and the political narrative. That's what we see. Now, we know we have two major political parties in Jamaica. We have the PNP, the People's National Party, and we also have the GLP, which stands for the Jamaica Labour Party. And those two parties have their respective media houses. And for years, I'm not sure, maybe they were a little bit more discreet. Um, the Jamaica Labour Party would not have been discreet about its ownership of, of um, the Observer through um, the former um, Gordon Brooks Stewart. Right, because he was the, he is the founder, or was the founder. He's now deceased of the Jamaica Observer. So we know that whatever they diffuse would have been closely aligned with the um, the philosophy and the narratives of the Jamaica Labour Party. Because you know, make no bones about it. Gordon Wood Stewart was an avid Jamaica, he was an avid member of the Jamaica Labour Party. Right, so that people know. So I don't think that we would you know, criticize them that they were not doing their jobs and stuff like that. In the first place, I do not think that we have enough media competitors in Jamaica, in the media landscape, right? We need more papers, we need more, yeah, we need more media in Jamaica, as it were. I think a lot of what we have, we have a lot of yeah, talk show hosts, yes, and that we, we have an abundance. Uh, but we need more papers and quality journalistic papers. And why not form them so that journalists can also practice their craft? I'm sure there are lots of people coming from the University of the West Indies. And if we should have more, you know, papers in Jamaica, newspapers in Jamaica, then they would be able to land themselves a job and they can also compete with the Gleaner and the Jamaica Observer. But as it stands here, the Gleaner and the, the Jamaica Gleaner and Jamaica Observer are partisan in their presentation of the news. I don't think that that is any uh, thing that they want to hide. So why is the Gleaner now suggesting it almost like, no, they're not. They're not trying to present the news from a partisan lens, from a partisan lens. Now, the more you hide that from people because people are seeing it for themselves, the more they will not trust you. If you are doing something that people are evidently seeing that you're there, evidently seeing that you're doing it, and then you are, you know, rejecting, denying that you are not doing that thing, then people are not going to trust you. It's going to create further distrust in and the lack of confidence in what that particular media or person is doing or not doing. Right? We have to understand that. So what the media should be doing now. 
perhaps they can debunk some of the allegations against them, but they can't debunk all those allegations entirely. People are not stupid. The Jamaican people are not stupid, right? And I'm not here again supporting or condoning violence. And I do not think that we should attack any particular journalist. We should attack them with the truth, right? And if they fail to deliver journalistic integrity, they should be attacked, not in the sense of verbally. I'm not saying now that you shouldn't use expletives, but you should call them out, right? You should push back. There should be some pushback against what they're doing or probably what they're not doing, right? That is very important. But I think we have the situation in, in Jamaica where we are beyond the criticisms and those who are in power, how dare people who are below them criticize them as if the media is not there to be a public servant and to render public service to the citizens of Jamaica, but they think that they're kings and queens too because they are in bed with the prime minister and the government and the private sector, the PSOJ, the private sector organization of Jamaica. So they don't really feel that they have an obligation to render transparency and to render a non-partisan news and objective analysis of the news to Jamaicans. And for years, I have been saying to the Gleaner, your presentation of the news is lacking. It's poor. It's really not up to date. It's really not modern in many ways. And I think the Gleaner needs to get with the times Rather than sitting and, and you know complaining about what the teachers are doing and not doing, yes, you can that also is valid, but you also need to also do an introspect, introspective look of what the gleaner and the Jamaican media landscape is doing, because it's not really the best journalistic um work. Now we can say we have to some extent freedom of, of expression as far as what the, the PSOJ and the oligarchy would like us to hear and would like us to talk about. But when it goes beyond information that they don't want us to talk about, then it is very sticky. And let me just say here, categorically speaking, that my observation is that before the Dada Saga, saga right, the, before the Dada situation occurred, the Dada debacle, happened that the Gleaner, for the most part, they had some very good journalists like the Martin Henrys and the, um, um, you know, the, that other, um, Ian Boynes and lots of other journalists that you used, used to have in the Jamaica that used to write for the Gleaner. Um, outstanding journalists who would really bring the news um, to the best of their abilities and to have fair and objective analyses. However, after the Dodos debacle, I could see the Gleaner started to go on a downward path. And the way in which the news is presented is really not the best. It's almost like it's just a you know, headline news, right? It's, it does not present the news that people would be expecting coming from the dominant newspaper of the island. Right? I think that's something, the, and the Gleaner, the media people in Jamaica, the media personalities, um, have to come to grips with these realities and understand that you have an intelligent populace, or you have a segment of the population at least, who read and are intelligent and who can make and who can render an intelligent analysis of what you're doing or what you're not doing. Yeah? You can't just expect that you can just come and criticize other professions and you should not, you are beyond criticisms because you are journalists and, oh, you are the ones reporting the news. It does not work like that. And there are criticisms I'm seeing here in the papers that people are alleging that the, the Gleaner House is uh, particularly biased towards the PNP. And people have been saying that for years. I mean, even those at the University of the West Indies, we people think that the intellectuals have long had that tradition of voting for and supporting the People's National Party. But here we have the, the, R, the RJR, Gleaner Communications Group, has come out strong against the content in an AI-assisted video that has been circulated on social media, making false and misleading claims of political bias about the Gleaner and members of its team. Now, we know that there are AI operations and they're false, and it's not only going to happen to the Gleaner, it's technology, and we're living in the AI world, in the world of artificial intelligence. So even those of us who are YouTube creators, content creators, we're going to find ourselves also in that position. I've seen many people who are um, create content creators for TikTok. Also, they're being, you know, targeted 
by these AI devices. So Gleaner, you're not the only victim. So don't pretend as if you're the only victim and your life is, up, you know, whatever. I mean, the fact of the matter is that this is the reality and we lament it and it should not be. I do not endorse this sort of behavior. I do not endorse um, false allegations being heard against anyone or any organization or any institution. However, the Gleaner also has to look at itself. It has to take an introspective look in the mirror to see what it's doing. So in defending the integrity of the 190-year-old media house and its team, the management of the Gleaner and the Gleaner wishes to make it clear that it holds in very high regard the time-honored tenets of journalism and therefore pursues truth and seeks balance without fear, favor, or agenda. Is that true, Gleaner? Is that true that you seek balance without fear and favor an agenda? I don't think so. I don't think that Gleaner is seeking to present the news in a fair and objective manner. I don't think that is true. And the Gleaner knows that that is not true. So why lie to the people? Just say that in some cases, this is the party that you support and this is, and let people know that this is what we support, right? You should have no fear of what we stand for. I mean, the New York Times, people know that the New York Times supports the Democratic Party and the mainstream media for the most part in the United States support the Democratic Party. I don't think that they are unashamed. Well, I don't think that, yeah, I don't think that they feel shameful, I should say, of that sort of stance, right? We know that the New York Times, the Washington Post, the US Today, and the, um, the LA Times, all of these papers, they are um, voice, what should I say now? They're voices for the Democratic Party, right? And I would think that the Gleaner is a voice for the People's National Party. Now, sometimes they pretend as if they are, you know, critiquing the PNP and that's so they play the game and whatever. But the fact of the matter, for the most part, it, it would appear Gleaner um, that you sometimes favor that party. Maybe you need to do a shift now and maybe this is now the time that you need to um, refocus and rebrand yourself, right? As a credible newspaper. I don't. I think you've lost a long time your credibility, particularly after the pandemic and during the pandemic. Noting that it will take action to protest its team, to protect rather its team, the management further noted the Gleaner stands behind its team of journalists and notes that the claims are not only disparaging of both the Gleaner and its team of reporters, but they also put members of the team at risk of being targeted in very varied ways. Now, we do not wish for anybody to target the cleaner and the, the, the members who work there. And furthermore, if we're living in a truly democratic society, people should not be attacking people because of their stance. If the cleaner wants to be PNP, which it should not be, because I think it should be a, a sort of media outlet that is, you know, is, is committed to diffusing non-partisan news and objective analysis of what is happening in the news. But if that is what it has taken, the lens through which it is working, that it wants to be a PNP, let it be so. They have the freedom to do so. I think we should have what we should have now in Jamaica are more media houses that can compete with the Gleaner if that's the stance that they're taking, right? And same thing with the Observer. Now, the Gleaner wishes to make it clear that it holds very high regard, the time-honored tenets of journalism, and therefore pursues truth and seeks balance without fair favor or agenda. I think I read that already, okay? So that is what the Gleaner is saying. Now, there's something here that I wanted to bring to you. Um, look at what the Gleaner is now saying. This is an editorial coming from the Gleaner, unpacking the SSL saga. So this is coming from the Gleaner, from the editorial of the Gleaner, from the editor, um, the editor of Spen of the Gleaner, the Jamaica Gleaner. Now, the newspaper, this newspaper appreciates Nigel Clark's appeal for patience in the criminal investigations into the more than 4.7 billion, that's 30 million um, US dollars fraud at the collapsed broker and investment house, Stocks and Securities Limited, that's the SSL. He indicated that the probe was deep and complex involving many victims, but was being handled with competence and transparency. Now, how could Dr. Nigel Clark say that? that the case is being handed with trans, um, handled rather with transparency, right? Because people don't know, including Usain Bolt. 
isn't aware of, he doesn't know what's going on. And that's why he came out to talk. So what about this transparency? We don't know. And this is how people in Jamaica just use words. They, we just use words for using words. But words in Jamaica have absolutely no meaning. They are just there to impress you, the ones coming from the intellectual class, that they can use words. But the words have absolutely no meaning. Because what transparency is Nigel Clark talking about? When even the victims, right? Not We are talking, talking about the public. The victims, the, 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 the clients who need to get back their money's return. They don't know what is happening. They are in the dark. So what transparency is Nigel Clark talking about? However, Dr. Nigel Clark, the outgoing finance minister, he's the outgoing one, and he's going to leave without this thing being cleared up and dealt with, may have taken to live literally the concerns raised by the athletics icon Usain Bolt about the state of investigation and the insufficiency of updates he perceives therefrom. The minister therefore missed and failed to respond to the larger issue beyond the question of criminal liability for the fraud that was implicit in Mr. Bolt's observation. When will, when will he and other victims of the SSL fiasco get back their money and how much, right? So we don't know when they will get back their money and how much they will get back. And that's why it's not transparent, right? He's just saying that there's invest, there are investigations, but what investigations? who are behind the investigations and are they credible organizations, right? We don't know. First, we heard it was the FBI who was going to in, uh, investigate what the, 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 the allegations surrounding the fraud. Then it was the crawl, some crawl organization from the UK. And now we are in the dark. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And people need to know what is happening if you are talking about transparency. Now, this is a front on which the Financial Services Commission, the Securities Industrial Regulator, has been far too quiet, or rather, the FSC has been insufficiently robust in helping SSL's clients navigate their way through the miasma of this affair, including what they should do to secure and assert their rights. That cannot be the subject of a single or one-off declaration or public announcement. Now, it's interesting that the Gleaner thinks that the regulatory organization should be the one to divulge what is happening and to let the clients know what really is happening behind the scenes and to shed some amount of transparency on the item, on the matter. However, what is the purpose of the Gleaner and the media outlets in Jamaica? Aren't they the ones who should be divulging and unveiling what is happening. Right? So what's the purpose of the media? To just echo everything that they hear coming from the government and the private sector? Or are you supposed to be challenging to be antagonistic to the government and the private sector? But that is not what we're seeing coming out of these major dominant media outlets out of Jamaica. Right? They are not in any way courageous, as the leader would like to put it. They're not fearless. It has emerged that even before SSL's disclosure to the regula regulators in January 2023, that one of its employees had confessed to stealing the equivalent of 250 million Jamaican dollars from the accounts of 40 clients. So long before the fraud issue came out, the fraud case came out, they were aware the FSC was aware, according to the Gleaner, that there was fraud and that 250 million Jamaican dollars were taken from the accounts of 40 clients. And the, the, the regulator had known for years that the company was badly managed, that it had existed on the brink of insolvency, and that periodically it breached undertakings to right side itself. But mildly, the FSC pussyfooted on the matter disregarding its fiduciary obligations to the Jamaican people. Now, this is what the leader is saying, that the F FSC has all these responsibilities that the Gleaner should also have, right? So who is going to be an oversight for these regulatory organizations? Shouldn't the press be the ones who should be observing and seeing if these regulatory organizations are doing their jobs? 
right? But they're pretending now the gleaner is now foisting its responsibilities onto these regulatory organizations, such as the FSC. But what is the responsibility of the gleaner? What are the responsibilities of the media outlets in Jamaica? Just to echo and to parrot everything that you hear from these regulatory organizations? Hmm? What is the media's role? And this is what we have. This is the discussion that we need to have right now in Jamaica. Not talking about who is attacked. Now, we do not condone and we do not wish for any hoodlums to attack any journalists in Jamaica because it is their right if they want to be GLP or they want to be PNP or they want to, you know, um, attach themselves to any ideology, political ideology. That is their right in any democratic society. But don't say that you are something when you're not. This is what we're saying to the Gleaner. And not only to the Gleaner, to the Jamaica Observer. I don't think the Observer will deny that it's also, it's affiliated to the Jamaica Labour Party. But the Gleaner is pretending as if it's not a PNP sort of paper, right? Which, <laughs> I mean, who are they fooling? In the face of the scandal, the FSC finally acted, asserting its... Um, presumed power under the law to take control of SSL. It inserted a temporary manager, that's Ken Tomlinson, into the company. The regulator said that when it acted, SSL was insolvent. So they knew that it was insolvent and they uh, employed somebody, Ken Tomlinson, to take over and to deal with the insolvency, the matter of insolvency at the, at, at, at the SSL. SSL's owners and directors challenged the FSC's intervention in court, claiming that they had acted first in appointing a trustee, that's uh, Cadian Campbell, with a mandate to wind up the company. Mr. Campbell insisted that the SSL was, insol was solvent at the time of his appointment. So they're, we're all lying, right? In May, Justice David Batts ruled that Mr. Campbell's appointment was indeed lawful. He ordered an end to the FSC, Ken Tomlinson, Tomlinson's temporary management. In other words, SSL was to be returned to the trustee, Mr. Campbell, who was to effect its court-supervised liquidation. The FSC has appealed Justice Bat's ruling. Now, this is all, you know, smokes and, you know, and, and screen, but, you know, this is all smoke screen, I should say, you know, it, it, this is something that is unfathomable. It's unfathomable. And, uh, something that you just wonder what really is Jamaica? It's almost like it is a, I don't know. It's a play fee, it's a playground. Jamaica is really a playground. It's not really a real place to live, right? And I'm wondering who can take us seriously because we don't take ourselves seriously, do we, right? Now for ordinary, this is now what the Gleaner continue, the editorial continues to say, for ordinary folk who are not versed in legal matters, there is an absence of clarity. Many people who had investments in SSL are now uncertain about how to proceed, which we hope will be clarified when SSL holds a planned meeting with investors in the coming weeks. And that's what they do. The all meetings and they need to, to you know, believe that they're important. And these meetings, after the meetings, nothing comes out of these meetings. Right? Nothing substantive comes out of these meetings. And then the people have to remain, you know, um, filled with anxiety because they don't know what has happened to their investments. Jamaica is known for, for doing these things, right? They have this sort of infamous identity. Remember what happened to the... Um, Carlos Slim, right, and his, you know, all the all in sand, the cash plus, and people did not get back their monies, their primary investments. People didn't get back these funds. This is the sort of Jamaica that you're living in. That you're, you're the funds in these financial institutions, the, these institutions that which should be legal, are not necessarily secure, and at any given moment can be fleeced 
and no one will be held accountable for doing so. This is the sort of crudity that we often see displayed by the Jamaican upper echelon, the, the ruthlessness displayed by them, because they have no respect for the common man, even when the common man has worked hard for his or her money. Right? Have absolutely no respect and no regard for these people. Now, and those of you who think you're in the middle class and you think that you are beyond what they will do to you. I'm sorry for you, because this is what they're telling Bolt also. They're sending a clear message to Mr. Bolt that we run the show. And how dare you, little country boy, think that because you've run and become world famous that and you have lots of money that you are on our level, right? You are not at our level, right? And that is what they're sending him, that clear message. We hope that he gets back his money, right? And those of you who are so obsessed with Usain Bolt, you have to also be obsessed with what is happening to the entire country and the entire, the people who also have lost their money. Why are you so obsessed with Usain Bolt? Because he ran a few races and won. Hmm? Right? Now, it is not known whether Mr. Bolt, who claims depending on how the counting is done between 6 million and 12.7 million US dollars, is among the confused lot, uncertain as to whether he will get his money back. He, unlike most, has a high-powered lawyer on the case, right? The gleaner is clear, saying that unlike most, right? So the Usain Bolt is able to retain lawyers. The thing about a lot of the third world, and um, I'm sure it happens in the first world countries, but particularly in the global south, is that lawyers are, are cro crooked and cruel, right? So I'm not suggesting here now that I don't know Usain Bolt's lawyers. But when they, you know, have these clients and customers, like you say, in both who have lots of money, then, of course, the whole case matter is extended, it's lengthened. The more it's the court matter is lengthened, it's the more money the lawyers can earn. Right? So that is how it works. So we don't know when this matter will ever be solved. And you say, well, let's get back his money. Maybe he'll lose a lot of money on legal affairs and legal charges, right? Wow. Now, but getting clear answers ought not to be dependent on whether an SSL client has or can afford a lawyer. But that's what happens in Jamaica. If you don't have money, then you're not going to get any justice. Neither should it be dependent on a ministerial response to a hugely iconic figure about the status of a criminal investigation. It is the regulator's responsibility to keep the people to whom it has an obligation in the loop. I remember when we were having the discussion about whether Bob Marley should be a national icon, a national hero, whatever. And people were saying, you know, of course, I don't believe in Bob Marley becoming a national hero, but that is not the discussion for this morning, for this afternoon. The discussion really is that Bob Marley and, well, his family, right, realize that the Jamaican elites are ruthless people. And they have left Jamaica. They don't you know, wish many of them to reside there. And they're not going to share their lots of their inheritance. In fact, it's alleged that the government of Jamaica wanted, perhaps with the in, in, in cahoots with the with their financial masters, wanted to steal Bob Marley's Bob Marley's inheritance. You know, his, you know, his legacy, his economic estate. Right? It, <laughs> that's what it has been alleged. If the family, if 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 um his wife and children had not fought to retain what their father had left for them because he had not written a will, then she, more than likely the Jamaican government would have, along with its the private sector of Jamaica, would have had it. Right? This is the sort of Jamaica that we're living in. And then you're talking about he's being a national hero. And you expect his children to love Jamaica and to, you know build up Jamaica to develop Jamaica. When the elites, the economic elites, the Jamaican ruling class has no respect for the average Jamaican who has made it in life. In fact, they seem to be envious of that person. 
and wishes to or wish to bilk that person out of their hard-earned wealth. Hmm? This is the sort of Jamaica that we are living in. And it's Jamaica to the world. It is Jamaica to the world. And people have to understand that there are different Jamaicas, you know. So when you talk about Jamaica, I always ask, well, what Jamaica are you talking about? Are you talking about the Jamaican of the elites, the Jamaican of the middle class, or the Jamaican of the very small middle class, I should say, and the Jamaica of the of the masses who are impoverished, who are working class, like was it you say in both? Because had you seen both, not come up with this, had he not been connected to people who could have harnessed his his talent, right? Then he would not be in the position that he's, he finds himself, himself in right now. Hmm? And if you say Bolt is listening to this video, you know, I remembered he was at this particular meeting that was um, organized by the Seventh-day Adventist Church because you say in Bolt's family, his mother is Adventist. I'm not sure if she still is, but he grew up in the church. Yeah. And when it was asked if he were going to return or when he was going to return to church, he said after he finishes making his life, something of a sort. And this is, these are my words. I'm paraphrasing, right? That he says after he's finished, you know, making life and getting what he wants to get. <laughs> now, I think this happened about two or three years ago that that meeting was, was uh, converged there, the Adventist meeting in Jamaica. I think it's some Pathfinders meeting, something of a sort. And it's interesting, fast forward to a year or so after that statement was made, that he's losing lots of money, right? Because our lives are not guaranteed, people. Our lives are not guaranteed. And whatever the wealth that we have guarded over the years, right? We're going to leave it anyway. Right? We're going to die. Look at Bob Marley. Bob Marley racked up a lot of money and died at 36. And if the family had not fought for the wealth that he had left them, then it would be in the hands of other people and they would have been impoverished. This happened in Jamaica, the very Jamaica right now, with elites claiming Bob Marley and wanting him to become a national hero. Right? And I'm sure the children must be wondering, they must be laughing and say, uh -huh, look at what you did to our father, or was willing to do. Right? This is the ruthlessness that can be displayed by the upper elites of the Jamaican society. Right? So this is what the beginner is, is urging, do urgently. So what the FSC must do urgently through press advertisements and public service announcements and private communication is to clarify the state of play since its appeal of Justice Bat's ruling. Who is in charge of SSL or its understanding thereof? Can clients with accounts or at SSL still register their claims and with whom and how? Right? With whom and how? And the cleaner went on to say, but I just wanted to bring this to you to say that this is how the media houses in Jamaica play the game. And they pretend as if they're doing investigative reporting. Then they're not. And perhaps they can't do any form of investigative reporting because, you know, people at the Gleaner and, you know, at this high level, the editor must have paid a lot of money. And she or he is beholden. I don't know if the, the editor is a man or a woman. Is beholden. I think she's a female. I think she's out of Barbados, if I'm not lying. All right? He or she is beholden to the economic oligarchs who pay them lots of money. Not all journalists, by the way, receive a lot of money, but the people at that level, at the administrative level, they do get a lot of money. And they have to follow the marching orders of their economic masters, the ones who allow them to get so much money. Right? So the gleaner has to come clean and the gleaner has to do an introspective look, to take an introspective look at itself in the mirror. 
and begin to understand that for the most part, not only the gleaner, but the Jamaica media, media landscape have failed the Jamaican people by not reporting the news in a non-partisan, objective, and transparent manner. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like and you share and you subscribe. Remember now to like the videos because that's the only way that the videos will be shared with others on the platform. See you in another one. Ciao.